Hey everyone, in this video, I'd like to take a look at something that takes on the original graphical. Whether you've been using something like Insomnia, Postman, Banana Cake Pop, Apollo Explorer, Pathfinder, well, there is something new. You can actually use GraphQL Explorer in the browser to connect to any GraphQL API, and it has plenty of cool tools. This is built by Inigo, so let's dive in and take a look at what it can do. First, you'll need to insert your GraphQL API endpoint. Don't worry, if your API is protected, you can configure headers to allow authorization. Just like any other GraphQL client, we have things like the query builder on the left, we have our query, we have our variables, and we have our response panes. These are pretty common no matter what graphical implementation that you are using. So let's begin by building our first query. We can do that on the left by clicking into one of our queries and then selecting each of the different nodes and selecting which fields we'd like to include inside of our GraphQL query. We can then see in our query pane, we have our constructed GraphQL query with any applicable GraphQL variables. Now inside of the variables pane, we can update the contents of our variable and here we'll just pass the currency code for euros and we'll pass along a unique cart ID. Then we can execute this GraphQL query and see the response on the page. So far, this has been a pretty typical graphical experience. But one thing that GraphQL Explorer does is allows you to share this with others on your team. So if we click share, we can then paste that URL to a colleague and they can open that GraphQL query or mutation and execute that for themselves. And unlike other graphical implementations, we have another yet cool feature, which is collections. We can create a collection to store any of our GraphQL operations for use later. You may have a collection that you want to save for one project, or you might want to save this same query, but with different variables for all of your different projects. So let's try it out. Let's create a new GraphQL mutation and we'll run that and save it to a collection for another project. And at any point we can return to a saved collection operation and rerun that. And GraphQL Explorer also comes with history so you can return to any previously executed GraphQL operation and rerun it. Next, if we open the connection settings, we here can see our GraphQL endpoint that we can change at any time, but there's also a proxy that we can enable. And this is great if you want to run a GraphQL query through a server if you have issues with cores. However, you will pay the price of running through that proxy, so the response times will be inflated. But for constructing GraphQL operations, perhaps that doesn't matter too much. So there we have it. We have a new GraphQL Explorer that we can use when building our GraphQL powered applications. Check it out at anigo.io and let me know in the comments what you think and what you're using today.